Raycast is one of those apps that appears in every top Mac apps list, but it's hard to scratch the surface of what this app can do without really spending some proper time learning it and building habits around it. So today I want to talk you through some of the lesser known features that I only recently found out that it had. I hope that as a result, I can show you a few features that you didn't know about this app. If you ever find yourself with dozens of apps open at the end of the day, and all of these windows just build up over time, taking up system resources and draining your battery life, auto quit might be for you. So to activate it, let's open Raycast, search for auto quits, and we see this manage auto quits option appear at the top. So let's go into that. And now we just have a list of apps, and all you need to do is search for the apps that you think you forget open most of the time. For me, that is things like Slack, Notion, WhatsApp, anything that I might open during the day and then just forget to close. So I'm gonna go here and search for Slack. We just press enter and the default timeout for Raycast is three minutes. I think that's probably okay, but I like to just give them a bit more buffer and I increase that to 15 minutes. So you can easily do that by going Command K, change interval and scroll down to up to 15 minutes. So the second feature is called window layouts. Now I made a video last month on the top apps I use on my Mac every day and two of the apps were Raycast and Rectangle. Now Rectangle is a dedicated window management app and you can use hotkeys to for example position the window to the left half of the screen or the right half of the screen or quickly swap windows between your big screen and your laptop screen. But in the comments of that video, a lot of you pointed out that Raycast also has window management features built right in. And since then, I've actually started to use Raycast in conjunction with Rectangle rather than a replacement. I find Rectangle a lot easier to configure and get started with, but it does require hotkeys to be assigned to every action before you can do anything. And I don't necessarily want to add a hotkey for, say, moving the window to the top left quarter of the screen. But that can still be a useful action from time to time if you're working on a massive monitor. So that's kind of where the Raycast window management features come in. Say I want to move a window to the top left quarter of the screen. I just go to Raycast and I type top left quarter. And the first result you see is the window management action. So when you hit enter, you can just move windows around into all sorts of weird positions to your heart's content without having to configure dedicated hotkeys for them. So feature number three is typing practice. This is a fun one and not really one you're going to use every day unless you're actively working to improve your typing speed. But it is pretty cool that you can just launch a really well-made typing speed app right within Raycast. Simply open Raycast, type typing practice, and hit enter. And now it's all down to you and how quickly you can type the words that come up on the screen. Yes, we all know that you can type two numbers in to add them together in the Raycast command dialog, but the calculator is actually quite powerful beyond that and might even save you a few Google searches if you get into the habit of using it. So here are some cool things it can do. Currency conversions. Let's, for example, find out how much an iPhone 16 Pro should cost in the UK. Hmm, interesting, 791 pounds. Obviously, it actually costs 999 pounds. Another thing we can do is time zone conversions. Let's, for example, find out the time in London. Okay, and what about the time in Singapore? That's cool, so Singapore is a day ahead right now because of the eight hour time difference. You can also do things like time in Singapore minus time in London. And one last cool trick is time in SF 14 minutes from now. Okay, another one is unit conversions. So let's find out how many milliliters are in a pint. Okay, but that's the US pint. What about imperial pints? Yeah, so it can do imperial pints as well. Now let's try that with cups. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to support imperial cups. So it's a bit hit or miss when it comes to British units compared to American units. All right, and finally, date math. So you can do things like five days from now, days until Christmas or days until 5th of February 2026 and you can get that as well. 
Raycast has a really quick note taker built in as well. At first, I did wonder why I would use this because I obviously have a dedicated note taking app I use, but what kind of made it click for me is how quick it is to open and just quickly jot something down that you might otherwise miss and then export them to your note taker of choice later on. So let's try it out. We go to Raycast Notes and it just immediately brings up a very simple note taker, no title, no heading, no formatting. Just type what's on your mind and you can worry about that stuff later. So once you're done typing, just go Command K and Command Shift E to export. And I just take it to Apple Notes because that's what I use most of the time. And that's it. Your note is saved and exported quicker than you can launch Apple Notes most of the time. If you still use the built-in Mac Emoji Picker, maybe give this one a try instead. The default Mac Emoji Picker, sometimes I find it fails to come up or it fails to insert an emoji into certain apps. And I haven't had any of those issues with the Raycast version. So let's try it out. Let's type emoji, press enter, and you can just search for any emoji you like. Let's search for some kind of laughing emoji. And you can see bottom right, it says paste to Notion, which is really cool as well. It kind of recognizes the app that's under it and it can directly paste into the app. So we press enter and here we go. So the Raycast emoji picker is a pretty small upgrade, but once you get used to using it, there is no reason for using anything else. Okay, feature number seven is a pretty quick one. It's called camera preview. If you're about to join a meeting or just want to check the lighting in your room, or you just bought a new camera and you want to test that out, you can just go to Raycast, type camera, and you get a live feed of your webcam. Okay, feature number eight is one of those, I can't believe they actually built this kind of features. I'm talking about Raycast's flight tracker. So if you just want to quickly check the status of a flight, all you have to do is enter the flight number. Raycast will show a quick preview of where that flight is. Let's try that out. I'm just gonna type in a random thing I hope is an airline code, which it seems to be BA370 from London Heathrow to Toulouse. Now you might think it just ends there, but when you press enter again, you see this live map with the position of the plane, status about the flight. Yeah, it's not super feature rich, but I just can't believe that this is built into Raycast. So next time you have a friend coming over or family visiting and you need to check their flight, this is probably the quickest way to do it. And finally, feature number nine is Raycast's extensions. This isn't really a single feature, but Raycast has over a thousand extensions for popular apps. Chances are apps you use most often will have an extension in Raycast, which allow you to quickly perform actions within that app without necessarily opening the app. So the ones I use most frequently are Notion, Linear, and Warp, which is my terminal. So just to give you an example, let's open Raycast. If I go Notion, for example, um, you can see that we can do a few things within Notion without necessarily opening Notion up. My terminal warp, I can open a launch configuration in warp directly. And I actually have this set up to open a tiled configuration of all the servers I need to run when I'm working on a full stack app, for example. So I have this backend and services configuration. And if I press enter, it will launch warp. One of the best things about this feature as well is you don't necessarily need to have the app running or even installed to use the extension. So for example, I don't have Linear, my task management app running at the moment, but I can go to Raycast and I can say Linear and create issue. I can actually just create the issue within Raycast. I don't need to open Linear. I don't need to install it if I don't want to. And honestly, I don't want to have too many Electron apps polluting my Mac. So I find this quite useful for things that I would otherwise have to go to a web page for. I really hope you found at least one useful feature to take away from this video that you hadn't seen before. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, please do like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.